I'm just saying we're having the best time talking about the way we work. And a little bit earlier, just in the last of the, at the end of that other video, we were discussing cotton gins. And Tommy was talking about the number of gins that were in McGee. And I wanted you to tell a little bit more about that. Okay. I, probably four, possibly five different cotton gins at that time. Mr. Everett had one, the co-op had one, and then there was one private down. But they were, I'm trying to tell you where they lo were located. Uh, <laughs> You sound like, and I know one was in the middle of East Side, kind of. Yeah, that was all I lived in. Right. The other three were on the street that where Lucky's TV is. Right, kind of running parallel with the railroad track. There was three down there. Uh huh. So right in that area, you know, there's a over the railroad track. There's a Lucky's TV repair right there, mm -hmm. and so they were running more parallel right through there, kind of right toward the water tank, kind of in that area. That's right. They were of course facing the railroad. Okay, this is really not a fair question, but do y'all remember when we got the water tank? No. <laughs> You're not that old. No. <laughs> Did we I always have? Water tank. <laughs> the whole water tank been here forever. Yeah. All right, that's the one that's in town. The yeah. one we've got that we've had for a long time. That that's what I was thinking. I couldn't remember. I knew we had one out on the highway that carried a little bit more, but that this was the main the main water tank was here. We also were discussing a little bit about the banks, and um, to our knowledge, the first bank in McGee was State Guarantee Bank, which later became Trust Farm, and then. Uh, Laverne was talking a little bit about Priority One. I thought you might be interested in what he was telling about Priority One. Priority One had a trailer over across the street from where Priority One is now, and that's where they started before they built the bank that they have there now. And uh, Mr. Vance from Hattiesburg is the one that was, he was a banker at that time. <clears throat> Uh, with Priority One. Of course, it wasn't called Priority One then. What was it called? That bank? bank of Sisson County? Bank of Sisson County. That was one. It had three names, but that oh. was the first one, I think. Yeah. But it wasn't like called said. Priority One back when it first started. And I was digging around, and, as usual, digging around in all my mess, and I found one of the uh, Priority One. Uh, well, it was Bank of Simpson County bags that I had had, you know, from a long, long time ago. And it's always interesting to me how these, uh, how businesses came into, into existence, and especially even with Priority One as it, now, as it is now, how much it has grown and grown out of Simpson County with its space still here. We also were talking about fast food, and the fact that they really did not have fast food here growing up. So my question was, what were, where did y'all eat? Beside home. <laughs> where you were supposed to eat is at home, but where did you eat? We had restaurants or called cafes back then and they were locally owned, not as you mentioned already, uh, not chains. Mm -hmm. People would uh, get a bill and go in. Lavon, you remember the name Lavon? She and her her brother Richard McGee, they had a they had a restaurant on one side of Main Street and then years later they moved from what I would call the east side over to the west side. But they provided us with the eating place for a long, long time. Well and then the McNair Cafe. Right. Oh, 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 oh. They followed right behind them. Right behind them, that's what I was thinking. And then you know, I have to mention the Triangle Cafe that was on the corner down there. You know, at the end, I guess where... Uh, Tom Taylor's. Is that really? Tom Taylor, his dad had a hot dog hamburger stand in that little thing. Oh, how neat is that? See, we were, we were trying to get Tom Taylor here. He knew he could tell us a lot. That's why he hid. I did have to tell him one story that I remembered and... Uh, as, you, as most of you know, I live in my grandparents' home, and um, the house is probably like 98 years old now. And Tommy, who is my uncle, lives across the street, 
Laverne, who has been my friend forever, lives across the tracks. And so we've all known each other. But my mother had told about when McGee first got uh, lights for the um, street lights, that when they wired the street lights, it was the main street that went down the side of my house was one of the first light streets they lighted. And it was a big deal to turn the lights on. You know, it was just like Christmas, turning the Christmas tree lights on. Everybody was out in the front yard all to watch the turning on of the lights. And when they flipped the switch, it blew every light in the house because they rewired it wrong and everybody lost electricity. So, you know, we take for granted those street lights and I think I think all we take for granted is lights a lot of times is seeing them. But um, I hope that you'll share with us some things that you remember maybe about your growing up years and share pictures with us. I'm always interested. I'd like to tell you, let Tommy tell you a little bit about his business, which is now Napa, McGee Auto Supply, and it's got a long and good history to it. So when did y'all start out? I finished school in 1950 and I went to work for McGee Auto Supply the same year. Which and was owned by? It was owned by three individuals and they had it for about nine months and my dad and two of his brothers purchased it and that's how I got involved. And I didn't realize that. See, I thought that it was GT all the time. No. He had a repair shop downtown on Main Street mm -hmm. where he worked on vehicles. But the parts store was, and I don't know the three people's, the name of the three people, mm -hmm. but they put it all together. But uh, for whatever reason, they decided after six or eight or maybe even a year that they didn't want to do that. So. My dad got a couple of his brothers, and they got together and they purchased it. All right, you were in, originally you were in the building that burned about a year ago, right? It, which was next. Originally we were in a building that was gone preceding that. Which belonged, That's right. Belonged to Walter Fagan, and we mm -hmm. rented that building for about five years. Of course, it's been torn down. But the building that burned, we were there 30 years. And of course, we've been in the building we're in now 30 years. So you've been in that business how many years? I uh, came in 1950 and figured out it's 60 something. Well, I don't really know exactly how old you are. I never think of Tommy as being old, so you know, I don't think about it like that. But that's some, something that he's worked in the same business for 60 something years. There's not many people that can say that at all. Um, Laverne, I wanted you to tell us a little bit more about the changes that you saw after you moved to McGee in 50. Maybe through the schools or the city or whatever. Well, I think that <clears throat> probably the city streets have changed a lot since I moved here. And of course, the restaurants, the fast food places, they've been in business since I moved here. It's just been so much change out on the four lane since I've been here. And uh, the brother didn't have, didn't we have trees on Main Street at one time? Uh, I don't know. Seems like we did. I've seen sure. the picture of that and I'm still mad. I don't know who had to do with the cutting down of the trees, but that is just awful. I'm just saying that was terrible. Uh, but I've seen the picture of the beautiful oak trees that were yeah. up and down Main Street all the way. And Miss Mamie, your mother-in-law was really the right in there with the beginning of the library along with miss uh, no she was a red cross lady red forever cross lady, right. forever his his mother-in-law was so it was interesting with that one other thing i want to touch on is city government when you were growing up did did we have a mayor yes all right i mean you may not remember who the mayor was when you were young but who is the last Who's won some of the mayors we had? George Reynolds was mayor. Um, we've had mayors that have gone in the office and stayed for a long, long time, mm -hmm. like Jimmy Clyde. Mm -hmm. And Pete Russell, another good example. He, he stayed there many years, as well as he was clerk maybe 15, 18 years prior to the time that he became mayor. Uh, O.J. Bigman was one of the earlier mayors. D.L. Meriton. Dolphus Sheraton was the mayor too? Yeah. Okay. Did the um, 
and then I know that Geo Parker was. Geo Parker. Were those mayors paid? I'm going to say yes. You think yes? I couldn't remember if they were paid or not, and if so, I'm sure it was mere nothing, because they didn't go sit over at City Hall. I know Geo Parker didn't. He ran the courier, so he was there. Yeah. They, they would go over from court days and that sort of thing. When <laughs> they would... I know they some of the board was not paid because, you know, McCarty, he stayed on the board for a, a long time, and he wouldn't accept. He didn't get any pay. He accept money. I'm not sure about the mayor. It's just interesting the things that have changed over the years, but you know what? The spirit of McGee has never left. Not since the beginning when you came, not since you were born here, not since I was born here. That spirit and that true love for this city has remained all of these years. And again, I would love for you to share some of your pictures and your thoughts about McGee as it was and what you think about it now. I hope you'll have a good week. I hope you'll continue to watch McGeeNews.com and have a blessed day.